the act of making a decision can trigger a flood of other processes. According to psychologist Leon Festinger, whenever we choose to do something that conflicts with our prior beliefs, feelings, or values, a state of cognitive dissonance is created in us. A tension between what we think and what we do. When this tension makes us uncomfortable enough, we're motivated to reduce it in a number of ways. We may change the way we think about the decision, or try to change how others think about it so that they can support our decision. Or we may change some aspect of our behavior so that our decision seems more in character with us. In other words, we try to reduce the dissonance between how we think we should act and how we actually act by changing one or the other. Dollar ...as a sort of a retainer and have you remain on call with us. Uh, would that be all right with you? Yes, that'll be all right. The cognitive dissonance came from the knowledge that the experiment was in fact boring and one dollar was insufficient reward for lying. Many of the one dollar subjects actually convinced themselves that the experiment was fun after they made their decision to reduce the dissonance between their prior beliefs and their behavior. They came to believe a big lie for a small incentive. To a girlfriend of mine who participated in an experiment last week and she said it was very tedious. Oh, I don't think that was the same experiment, because this one wasn't boring at all. I didn't think so. The $20 subjects, on the other hand, felt no dissonance, because they felt comfortable in lying just for the money. He said it was pretty miserable, and that I should do everything I could to uh, get out of it. Well, I think maybe your friend was wrong. Perhaps it's a different experiment, because this was a lot of fun. It, it appeared to me as if... a for, as if it were a puzzle, we you know, had to turn these knobs and I tried to figure out what we were doing it for, but I really couldn't figure it out. Perhaps you'll have better luck. Other theories might predict that the man who is paid most would have the highest motivation for enthusing over the dull task and would be most sold on it himself. Cognitive dissonance theory leads to an exactly opposite prediction. The man who is paid $20 knows that the task is dull, but he also knows that he had sufficient justification for saying that it wasn't. Did you enjoy working on the manual test? Well, it uh, really wasn't too enjoyable. In fact, it was rather boring. How about the man who is paid one dollar? He knows the task is dull, but he has two discrepant thoughts. He also knows that he did not have sufficient justification for saying that it wasn't. For him, there is dissonance. Time after time, we have seen what follows. He reduces the dissonance by changing his opinion about the dullness of the task. Did you enjoy working on the manual task? Yes, I enjoyed it. Would you like to participate in such an experiment again? Yes, I think I would like to. That, as humans, each of us have a worldview, and that worldview is usually formed in great part by the culture we grow up in. When we hear information that contradicts our worldview, social psychologists call the, result, the resulting insecurity cognitive dissonance. For example, with 9-11, we have one cognition, which is what, our official, what the official story of 9-11, what our government told us, what our media, media repeated to us over and over, that 19 Muslims attacked us. On the other hand, we have what scientists, researchers, architects, engineers are now beginning to tell us, which is that there is evidence that shows that the official story cannot be true. So now we've lost our sense of security. We are starting to feel vulnerable. People didn't know what to think about. And it's a very, very uncomfortable state to be in. And eventually our mind shuts off, just like when a computer is overloaded, our minds get overloaded, we can't handle it anymore, and we shut down. It's easier to deny it and move on with our lives. Another thing we can do is decide to look at the conflicting evidence and be sincere and be open-minded and look at both sides of the issue and then make up our own mind about what reality is. Um, and about a week later, I read a lengthy article by Professor Griffin um, about why he believes the official account of 9-11 cannot be true. 
and it was a very well-researched article. I was in my office at the time. I sat there and I felt my stomach churning. I thought maybe I was going to be sick. And I leaped out of my chair and ran out the door and took a, a long walk around the block, around several blocks, um, and just broke down. I understand now that what was happening was my worldview about my government being in some way my protector, almost like a parent had been dashed and uh, it was like being cast out into the wilderness I think is the closest way to describe that feeling and I sobbed and I sobbed felt like the ground had completely disappeared beneath my feet and and I knew at some point during the walk that I knew that I was going to have to become active in educating other people about this that there was that for me to retain any sense of integrity I was going to have to take some action. I couldn't just let something like this go. These are beliefs. They are not scientific facts. But these beliefs do keep us from looking at the empirical evidence. Uh, when something like 9-11 happens, we need to be sure that we have a real investigation into who the perpetrators are. And then we need to be sure that those perpetrators are held legally accountable. It's part of the healing process on the individual level as on the collective level. We need the truth in order to heal.